It's the place where senior living insights and entertainment collide, like two star-crossed lovers meeting at a polka dance. This is the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast, hosted by Jeff Bell of Bell PR and Marketing. Senior Living Marketers, put your hands together for the host with the most. Okay, maybe not, but he tries. Jeff Bell. Thank you, Tom, as always, for the introduction. We are back after a bit of a break on the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast and excited to uh, dive back in with our next guest. We try to cover uh, as many things that are relevant to the senior living world as we can. And so I thought it would be a a great idea today uh, to bring on a very uh, old friend of mine, Kevin Smith. He's not old, but he's a friend. He's an old friend. So uh, Kevin Smith, who is a fitness professional, um, fitness trainer with the Denver YMCA, and um, Kevin has a wealth of knowledge um, from just his experience there and his experience, um, frankly, with his own personal fitness uh, that I think will be good to share with uh, folks in the senior living world. Maybe you're an activities director and you're thinking of uh, revamping or vamping up your fitness program. Kevin might have some tips for that. Maybe maybe you run a, uh, a standalone community and you're looking for ways to uh, get your residents more engaged. Uh, whatever it is, Kevin and I go all the way back to uh, to our college days. And so it's great to reconnect with you. And uh, just uh, first, I guess we'll just say welcome to the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's kind of dive in. Obviously, uh, at the YMCA, you're working with people um, of all ages um, and all levels of fitness, from people who are very fit, who've stayed fit, to people who uh, maybe are jumping in for the first time. But but for the purposes of this podcast, let's focus on on senior living and and really kind of target that first thing I mentioned, which is um, activities directors, fitness directors at a senior living community. Um, where should their focus be when you've got, you know, the average age of a resident these days, uh, move in is probably around 80 to 82. Uh, some of them have stayed fit over their lives. Some of them, as you can imagine, have some, some, uh, challenges that they would love to overcome balance, things like that. Um, what are, where would you start, um, with, with the average 80 to 82 year old who comes to you and says, you know, I want to work on balance. I want to work on uh, maintaining the strength that I have, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is just get moving. That's number one. Um, if somebody's not already active, um, the first step, whether it's just, you know, walking, um, you know, down the hall in you know, community living, um, center so that you can get that movement. Um, I know sometimes, uh, especially older people, depending on what the environment is around you, it's hard to sometimes get outside if you don't have a good sidewalk or a good, you know, flat surface. So even just walking down the hall, that movement um, is critical. Um, the the next big thing is strength training. And I know you're thinking, Kevin, they're 80, 90 years old. They're, they're not going to be on Muscle Beach with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not a thing happening. Uh, but there's a lot of great um, benefits you can get um, from weight resistance training or strength training at literally any age. Um, study after study has proven that it doesn't matter when you start, you still see some benefits from it. And what that strength training does is, um, first of all, build muscle, which we know. Um, and you don't have to, again, be at bodybuilder levels to to get benefits. Literally just picking up a five pound dumbbell um, is good enough. We're just you know, moving your body in, you know, if you can do squats or something like that with body weight, that's good. But that, um, in addition to building that muscle, that's going to help with your balance. Uh, first of all, it's going to help with your movement. Um, you know, another big thing uh, that a lot of people don't realize with weight resistance training is it uh, increases bone density. Um, and that's very critical as we age and we become more imbalanced and our bones do weaken as we age. So, um, not only can strength training help prevent a fall, but it can lessen the damage when you do fall. So you're less likely to break a bone. And then, you know, uh, for everyone, but especially women, that increased bone density can help stave off or mitigate um, osteoporosis. So how do you help someone? Uh, because one of the other things that I think especially happens at the at the community level is maybe you have someone who at various times in their life have been relatively fit, but they're not exactly what you would call a people person. They're a little bit of an introvert. Uh, they might play cards at the community. They might go to a movie night. They might do something like that. But coming to an exercise room full of others mm-hmm. 
is a little bit overwhelming for them. How do you help people get over sort of the social stigma of working out in a larger group? Yeah, well, for the people running the program, um, the biggest thing is creating a welcoming environment. Um, you know, when when you see a new face in a fitness class, you know, or or any group activity for that matter, it's it's a great idea um, to to greet them and make them feel welcome. Um, at the Denver Area YMCA Association, um, we actually um, are working on an initiative we call um, Third Place, and that is we want the YMCA to be the place where you spend your third most amount of time. Uh, the first two being um, home and school or work. Um, and so that's a big part of what we do and what you can do, um, you know, at your living centers or community centers is, you know, every new face you see, make sure you greet them. Um, and specifically for, for fitness classes, um, right out of the gate, um, do you have any injuries that I need to be aware of? Do you have any, you know, limitations or pain in any joints like knees or shoulders, um, and be ready, um, with modifications. Um, that's something I learned really early in my career, um, just kind of out of the gate, started working with, um, uh, a fitness studio that really specialized in um, people who were 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, even um, who had literally done no exercise since sports in high school. Um, and so taking these people who, uh, you know, might have a knee injury um, or some sort of back pain and having a workout that fits the entire group, but also knowing what ways you could potentially modify those exercises in that workout. So um, with most exercises, when I'm writing a workout plan for class, um, I make sure that if I don't have it written down, I at least have a good idea in my head of what are some modifications to this. Uh, let's say you get somebody who shows up for class and they're like, you know, I'm excited to work out, but I'm really nervous uh, because squats hurt my knees. You need to be ready to have some sort of modification for somebody. Otherwise, they are going to feel excluded or um feel like they're just kind of sitting on the sidelines or everybody's watching them because they're the only one not doing anything. So um, having those modifications, uh, you know, ready and, and creating a welcome environment are, are two key things to get those people involved. And when you talk about limitations, we obviously see various levels of limitation in the senior living world. A lot of the communities, especially CCRC level, you've got independent living residents who are still living on their own. They get around pretty well, uh, all the way to assisted living where you've got folks who maybe need some form of help uh, with their daily um, activities. So someone comes in and they're wheelchair bound or they walk with a cane or various limitations where a full body workout is probably not going to happen anymore. Sure. Um, how, how do you, number one, um, still get them involved? And number two, um, make them believers that they can be involved and that working out your upper body, even if you're in a wheelchair, is better than not doing anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. Um so equipment is a, is a big key. Um, what you have at your disposal um, can really affect what kind of workouts you can obviously give. Um, but the other piece is being creative. So, um, you know, if you're running a fitness program um, at your, you know, community living center or a place like that, um, don't rely on necessarily somebody who's on staff already who, um, yeah, they, you know, run marathons and they go to the gym a couple times a week so they could leave our fitness program. That's great, but especially with that older population, you really need to think outside the box and you really need to get creative with the exercises um, you bring to them. Um, a good example is I had a woman, we were just doing some personal training demos um, one week, just inviting people to you know do a 15 or 20 minute session, just to kind of see what it's like. And I had one woman come to me and she's like, I'm really nervous. Worked with a trainer before. I've had a lot of knee pain. Um, you know, it, it, it hurts to walk. I just, I don't, I need to strengthen that. And I don't know that there's anything that I can do, but I thought I'd just check it out anyway. And after 20 minutes, she's like, not only does my knee feel good, but I didn't know that there were exercises I could do to strengthen the muscles in my legs uh, without hurting my knee. Um, so you, you really have to get, you know, dive into some creativity uh, to, to come up with those exercises that work for people who do have limitations. I, I work with people who literally can't, you know, get up and down off the ground on their own, or I have to make sure we've got an appropriate size um, place for her to sit for certain exercises, because if a bench is too close to the floor, um, it's too hard for her to get up off of it. And so um, again, just getting creative, finding modifications, um, you know, checking in with them frequently, making sure that they're at an appropriate pain threshold and that, you know, exercising is not easy, 
but it shouldn't be doing further damage. You shouldn't be feeling joint pain or, um, you know, feeling like something is ripping or tearing. It should feel, it should be a good sore, not a, that hurt me. I'm not going back uh, pain. And that kind of leads me into what we, we got some, uh, some TV news coverage, frankly, for a client who had put in a synchronized swimming program for their residents. And what we heard over and over again from those residents, whether they were interviewed by me uh, in preparation for the news release or by the media themselves when they came out and did the story, was how much better they felt in the water. How much just that movement in the water, whether it was, yes. it was walking, doing water aerobics, um, talk about how how beneficial that can be for someone who, yeah, they've got sore knees. They 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 don't they don't get up and down as well as they used to. Oh yeah, um, lower impact um, activities are are a great thing. Um, our our uh, at the YMCA, our um, water aerobics class is one of our most popular classes, and it is mostly full of people who are above the age of 50 or 60 um because they love that that uh, movement um you know they're getting their heart rate up they're burning calories they're getting some resistance it's not quite the same as picking up a weight and putting it down as far as that weight resistance that goes but you're getting that resistance in that movement but at the same time that water makes it so low impact so you're not constantly standing or sitting or or having to move in ways that typically hurt you so we go from that, and then you talked about, I, I guess you called it low resistance um, type of workouts. When it comes to weights, um, less or more is not necessarily better. Um, and, and I know you touched on this a little bit before, um, but I've read studies lately, even, even for younger people that say, look, you don't need to be uh, you know, trying to lift the biggest barbell uh, at, the, at the gym. Um, you can get a ton uh, of benefit just from very, you know, five pound weights, two and a half pound weights. Right. Yep. So yeah, any about for older adults. Yeah. Any, any additional weight, um, than just your body weight is, is going to be, you know, great. Um, uh, and, and there are certain muscle groups that are difficult to target, which is body weight. Um, but yeah, just li like I mentioned before that, um, that adding that weight with that movement is going to, um, uh, increase that bone density. It's going to build muscle, um, another, another benefit, um, which is great for aging populations, but everyone, um, in general, especially in today's world, when you, um, lift weights, it pumps your lymph nodes, which actually boost your immune system. Um, and that's something we could all use at all times, <laughs> but especially in, you know, community living situations where everybody's in close quarters and especially with an aging population, when that, that immune system gets more and more compromised as we age, but yeah, even, even five pound weights and there's no. Um, I also want to point out there's no shame in two, three, four, or five pound weights. Um, I have people all the time who were literally ashamed that they're picking up just a five pound weight. Um, and I have to remind them, don't be. You have to start somewhere. And for some people, depending on their goals and, and their age and their previous activity, you know, they may top out at five or 10 pounds on any exercise um, their entire life. So it's important not to let um, your pride or your ego get involved and just you know, go for what you can. That said, I also see plenty of people that consistently pick up, you know, five pound weights that I know could do 10 or 15 pounds. Um, it's, it's a, I don't want to really say it's a, it's a joke, but it's something we, we kind of chuckle about in the fitness community. Um, we'll get moms a lot who um, refuse to pick up a weight more than five pounds because they're afraid of getting bulky, uh, but yet they can pick up their, you know, 15 pound baby no problem. <laughs> it's, um, so, so don't, don't shy away from what you can do. Um, but find, you know, push your, you, you should always be pushing yourself and challenging yourself, um, to new levels. And I always tell people, um, it's all about finding that edge. So where is your exercise, um, difficult, but not impossible. So you shouldn't be lifting so much that you're sacrificing form or can't finish the workout. Um, but you also shouldn't be going so light that at the end you feel like you've you didn't do it hardly anything at all. And again, for some people, that's five pounds. For other people, it's 15 pounds. It just depends. So you touched on the immune system um, a little while ago. And of course, another thing that's great for that is just getting outdoors and getting in and, and getting yep. fresh air. Yeah. Uh, depending on where you live, uh, that's going to be possible sometimes of the year and not others. Uh, and I know you also talked about terrain, but assuming you've got a community that's got walking trails that are set up for seniors. Sure. Um, how yeah. important is it for for these activities directors to get people outside, get them mm -hmm. walking around, that kind of thing, or even gardening? 
yeah, yeah, all of that is great. Um, you know, it's we don't think about it sometimes, but a simple act like gardening, you're you've got to engage your core. If you're on your hands and knees digging around in the dirt, you got to keep your core engaged. You're using your arms. Um, yeah, absolutely fresh air. Uh, just even seeing um, there have been some studies that just like looking at a picture of trees or greenery, you know, um, can actually just kind of help reset your mind, which is great for your mental health, which as we know also leads to, to physical health. Um, but yeah, if they've got a space to walk outside that's that's safe, um, absolutely go for it. Well, Kevin, thank you for for all of the great uh, the, the great information today. If if anyone was listening to this podcast, an activities director at a community or something, and they had a question about something they heard, is there a way they can get in touch with you? Maybe an email or something like that. Yeah, yeah. My email address is k e smith at denverymca.org. K.E. Smith at DenverYMCA.org. And you don't have to be in uh, in the Denver area. If you have a question, Kevin will be glad yeah. to, uh, to help you out. Uh, and again, we appreciate your time uh, on the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast today. Kevin Smith with the Denver YMCA, um, a fitness guru, uh, someone that I look at and say, well, maybe I'll look like Kevin someday if I, uh, <laughs> if, I, if I get after it in the gym. So thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. For Tom Watts, for producer engineer, Julie Montoya Houston, I'm Jeff Bell reminding you to never follow Be a Bellwether.